Chapter 2 In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw the, this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, according to the word which I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. In the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, and now the priests concerning the law, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people, <clears throat> and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer <clears throat> there is unclean. And now I pray you, consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were, when one came to an heap of twenty measures, there were but ten when one came to the press fat, for to draw out fifty vessels out of the press, there were but twenty. I smote you with blasting, and with mildew, and with hail, in all labors of your hands. Yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn, yea, as yet the vine, and the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree, hath not brought forth? From this day will I bless you. And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day shall the Lord of hosts, will, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, saith the Lord, and will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. There are a couple of really significant items here in this chapter of Haggai that really need to be adopted into our lives. As these people are building, laying the foundation really for the temple that they are going to rebuild that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, and they're going to rebuild it as best they can, these people recognize their extreme poverty, and they recognize that there's no way that they can build anything as magnificent as what Solomon built. And although they cry at the opportunity and the remembrance of having a temple built and having the opportunity of having the blessings of the temple, which are far more, far more than just a place to offer sacrifices. Lots of ordinances, lots of covenants, Lots of things done in a temple that are simply not described because they're too sacred. They're available in other scriptures, in other writings, but they are not available in the writings that we have in the Old and New Testament. 
the Lord makes known to these people. I mean, they, they cry at this. And, and they feel bad because of their poverty and that this thing is, that this temple is not going to be anywhere near as magnificent as it. It just breaks their hearts. And the Lord says through Haggai, Hey, guys, remember something. The gold is mine, the silver is mine. I mean, it's all over the face of the earth, wherever the gold and silver are. They're his. They belong to the Savior. They belong to the Lord anyway. So if we find some, we shape it, we make something nice and pretty out of it, we give it back to him. Have we given him anything he didn't have before? No. No big deal, guys. The thing he wants from us isn't the gold and the silver. He wants us to do some work of which we could be justifiably pleased, proud, glad we did it. But what he wants most is he wants our hearts to be right. He wants us to be merciful, to love one another, to serve one another. He wants us to be righteous. He wants us to do righteous judgment. He wants us to be obedient. And those are far more important to the Lord than any decorations that we can put in or outside of any building. Now, if we can do those things, that's nice. But it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to the Lord. It makes a great deal of difference to us how we enter those kinds of buildings. Now, he wanted the people to be righteous, and being righteous means doing the things, following the commandments of God, and the commandments of God are the things from God that are in our own best interest. You don't kill, you don't steal, you don't cheat, you don't do any of these sorts of things. You spend your time serving and helping one another, you love justice, you love mercy, you do all these other sorts of things. Those are the things that you want. Those are the things the Lord wants. Now, it talks about in the last days that there will be a temple built that will far surpass the temple of Solomon in beauty. And we know that will happen. It probably won't happen in, the new, in Jerusalem. It may happen in the new Jerusalem. We're look, looking forward to seeing all of that happen wouldn't it be wonderful that happens in our lifetime? But I don't know that it will. But it would be nice to sort of be here for at least part of it and see it happen. In verses 10 to 19, he talks about holy flesh and being defiled by a dead body. And it's, it's a weird concept. But you have to remember way, 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 way back into the first few chapters of the Old Testament where they talked about anybody who, is, who touches a dead body is considered unclean. And also that when they offer the sacrifices, some of the meat is considered most holy in that it needs to be consumed, needs to be eaten, and not wasted. It isn't burned, it's supposed to be eaten by the priests. And that's called holy flesh. And he asked the question, if you're carrying some holy flesh and you happen to touch some other things, does that make them holy? And the answer is no, 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 it doesn't make them holy. And then he asks another question. Well, if you're, if you're defiled and you're, you have a dead body and you, you touch something, does that make the whatever it is defiled? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the problem. These people in Jerusalem have a temple of God, which is most holy, which is the item of which they're saying is holy flesh. And they have the uncleanness, which is them ignoring the temple not finishing it off, not serving in it, not using it the way it's supposed to be. And just because they've got it doesn't mean that everything they're doing is righteous. Just because they have the Holy Temple there doesn't mean everything they're doing is righteous. They need to do both. They need to not only have it, they need to finish it off, they need to use it for the things it's supposed to be used for, they need to be living righteously, they need to be obedient. And then they will be holy, and then they won't be defiled anymore. And that's what that basically 